I reckon this is crucial. Membership of the leadership team need to attend meetings, a team teaching meetings that don't talk about bins and buses, but they talk about cohorts of kids and where they're up to. And if the issue is that we've got a decoding problem in the school, as the principal, you don't, know, you don't need to know the answer, but you certainly need to be part of the conversation so that you can provide the reciprocity, if you like, so that you know what the teachers need to improve. And I reckon the other thing is the leadership ensures a safe and orderly environment. That unteachables, I think some people did see this. There's a classic out of the unteachables I have to tell you about that, that, that was really interesting. I mean, I, they started off with 16 kids. They got to the end, they had nine kids. Right? What they did with the other seven kids who broke the rules and didn't want a part of it, they sent them back to the school. Right? So they went back unfixed. And so the, the, the point that I got out of that is that safe and all environment is absolutely essential, no doubt. But there are some kids, there are some kids who make it incredibly difficult. And I would say this to you, the system still does not recognise, I call them exotic kids, still does not recognise the need to cater for those exotic kids effectively. But not to say that a safe and orderly environment is absolutely crucial. Um, the, the leadership knows the progress of all the students. One of the principals here, she's got a school of 700, she knows the names of all the kids and you can sit down and have a chat to her about every single kid and where they're at. And why? Because she sees it as her priority and her core business. And it's, consequently the school does well. I reckon as principals, and if you're not a principal, go back to your principal and talk about this, it's absolutely crucial that you have back-to-back -back time release. It's essential so that the teaching teams can meet and plan the instructional time to, to instructional program. They've got to be able to meet in school time, not after school, because you know what? That's tired, weary time. And you sh it should be not negotiable, and it should be your timetabling priority. The other thing is, all teachers use strikingly similar practices in instruction and assessment. There's a bloke called Donald B. Reeves or something, and he's done the 90-90-90, okay? And he says this, that, and I reckon it's a failure of the AIZ, right? We started off out the AIZ happening in a couple of classrooms, a couple of classrooms. His view of the world is, if it's not 90% of the, of the teachers involved in the change and implementing the change, it's not going to work. If you've got 70% doing it, it's not going to work. He reckons the crucial mass is 90. Get on the go get Google him and see what he's saying. I mean, that's my layman's view of what he says. But I think that's strikingly some, that the practices have to be the same because if you've got a style of teaching in prep and it changes in one and it's dangerous in three and then it gets to six and they go off to seven and there's a different, a different way of teaching, the kids are up against it. So I think we have to really look at that within our school and across schools. Um, and data is used to plan the instructional program. And that's where we're going with the AIZ with Patrick Griffin. That's where we're going with Patrick Griffin, of taking the data, looking at the data and planning the instructional program. Look, I don't reckon, I, don't, I, I am a very simple person, right? I have to say that to you, and a lot of you are nodding and going, we already knew that. But I think that what we have to do is get it down to that really simple thing because the AIZ, the AIZ was developed by uh, Wayne Craig for one reason, for one reason, and it was that we reach every little Mary and every little Harry and every little kid out there in the schools, okay? The AIZ is about how well this kid reads and how, this, how competent this kid is at number and numeracy. That's what it's about. If the data doesn't move, and I promise you this, if the data doesn't move, it was another interesting exercise that we contemplated our navel about but didn't have an impact on the kids in schools. And so I do want to thank you guys because the AIZ visits said to me that in schools people are absolutely having a red hot go. They are really working hard on it and I think it's it, what build on what we've done Take the Patrick Griffin stuff and I reckon you get, we can really move the data in 2009 and 2010. I went on longer than I wanted to, but I knew nobody wanted to leave and so I appreciate it. Thanks everybody for coming and have a good day.